What's up guys, Chasing Lamely here, and since FM24 is out, then uh, I thought I would start off. Most people, of course, are playing their beta saves. I'm going to do a beginner's guide to FM24 for those of you who are new to the game. Maybe you've come back after not buying the last few, because there's been very few updates. I promise you this new version, much, much better than the, one, than the last few. Uh, this is for you. We're going to go through the new game step by step, and see if we can teach you a, little, a few little tricks just to get you up to speed. And hopefully you will learn something along the way. Of course, if you're used to playing FM23, if you've been doing that for a while, there are still new features, and I'll try and work our way through teaching how to use those as well, just so we can all get the best out of our FM experience. So, uh, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'm going to come back in literally a second in your time, and we'll start talking through the game. So, this is our home screen, the main menu screen of the game. Now, you will, of course, see a lot of this. I've been playing with Tramir, which is why you'll see a lot of Tramir shirts in the background. Usually, when you start the game here, it'll give you an option to load your save from FM23. Feel free to do it. I've been doing it with the Welcome to Rockland series, continuing from FM23 to FM24, and it's running perfectly. It does work very well. But if you're new to the game, first thing you want to do is go to the preferences. Now, I have my game in windowed mode. I recommend having a weekly auto save with the three rolling files because you know, the game will, will occasionally crash, unfortunately, it's just the way it goes. Uh, otherwise, setting-wise, you'll see all the settings here that we can go through. Um, text, obviously, turn it up. If you can't see anything properly, that's always good. And they've got a whole bunch of accessibility options. I always keep the sounds off, just because they're really loud and not very good. And also, you can set the graphics settings to recommend it for this PC. Mine's set to high, and it will do us nicely, and you can obviously choose all your things for... Uh, your profile picture for your targeted advertising, all that kind of stuff. Very, very simple, very straightforward. If you if you download new skins, you can pick them from there. You know, it's all very, all very basic stuff. All very basic stuff. Uh, have a look through it and set it up the way you'd like to set it up. For example, this one will cause me chaos because I always forget to change it. Uh, I'd like to have everything in the director cams and whatnot because that always helps immensely get that nicely set up for us, ready to go, and uh, we'll confirm that. Right, so we're going to start a new game, very simple stuff. You'll find all you have all these options. Now, career is the main mode, the main FM mode that most of us play. Uh, you can create your own club, which still works like career mode, except you name your club, and I think you pick your new players and all that good stuff. Uh, online career, you can play with your friends, just like career mode, but obviously over the internet. Uh, fancy draft, again, we would do usually against other people. And versus is the exclusively online mode. But we're going to go career mode today because that's what we need to be focusing on. And I'm going to keep it really simple. You can pick here from the club manager, international manager, club and international manager or unemployed as to where you start. I'm going to keep it really simple because we need a, a club with a good base to build on. I'm going to start with Manchester United, not because they need a rebuild, but just because I know they've got everything I need to show you what I need to show you today. So we're going to choose game mode, which is very simple. Uh, it's a brand new thing for FM24. So you have original mode, which is the way we've always played FM, where you get the squads that are up to date on release day, or more or less on release day. I think the date lock is about four or five days before release day. All the transfers are already made. Everything is as it is right now in real life. Real World has the transfers pre-programmed, but they aren't at the squad to start with. Makes it a little bit more challenging because you have to have in your head who is leaving your club, who's coming in when you're doing your transfers, when you're doing the transfer business. Or you can start as we are today with your world, where the budgets are accurate to the start of the season, as are the squads, and you can do your own sandboxy building. Now let's go into advanced setup. You can just hit quick start and it will do all this very quickly, but most people will do advanced setup just because it makes life easier. And uh, that, that does actually genuinely help. So uh, in terms of picking leagues, now for today we are just going to have the English League up, but you can have as many of these as your PC can handle. I do recommend not loading all of them. A, the game will slow down horrendously. B, you'll find up here, it will tell you if you go above 125,000 players in the database, your game will be slow, and it will warn you it will be slow. We're just going to load the Premier League though, because that's going to make life nice and straightforward. But in terms of the advanced options, I should probably turn my camera off. Let me, uh, let me turn my camera off so you can see everything you need to see here, because otherwise... We're all going to be very, very confused, and that won't help us at all. So let me uh, see if I can get rid of those. That didn't really do anything. There we go. I got rid of, got rid of myself. Um, excellent stuff. That might have got me demonetized on YouTube. Right down here in the advanced options, I'll keep myself off for the rest of the uh, the rest of the series. I think just because 
it will help us to see the entire game screen. So you have the advanced option. So you can use fake players and staff. It will replace every player in the database with entirely regenerated players. Same with the staff. You'll get an entirely random starting squad and you won't know who anyone is. It's quite an interesting way to make the game a little bit more complex if you're very experienced and want that kind of a bit more of a, a bit more of an in-depth challenge, I suppose. Uh, you can click Do Not Use Real Fixtures as a default for the Premier League. It will load the actual Premier League fixtures for the first season, so you'll play teams you would normally play in at that time. Uh, and you can choose not to add key stuff. I always have that on, because otherwise clubs who don't have assistant managers, coaches, it will just generate them for them. And if you happen to find that you were, would have otherwise had no staff, you don't really get the free option of choosing them. Um, you can add playables, players to playable teams. This, again, is if you've got a database. You'll find I quite often play with like the level 12, 15 databases for England. Uh, a lot of the lower down teams, they don't have any players. You click that, they suddenly have generated players in them. So it's kind of the halfway house to use fake players and stuff. Uh, you can disable first transfer window activity, which just means nobody has any transfer budget. And uh, that wouldn't be very helpful in this scenario. You could do it for the other two, I suppose, but it wouldn't be very handy for this scenario, so we won't do that. Now, this one is going to be important for us today. If you're brand new, disable player attribute masking. If you if the player doesn't play for your club, you obviously don't know everything about it. You have to scout them to find out what their stats, their attributes are. And that can make life really difficult for finding players. We're going to disable that today. I normally don't. We're going to disable that today because I think for a beginner, it's actually much easier to have it that way. And we'll take off our own control of teams we're managing in place because it will prevent us from managing Manchester United. And uh, it will only let you manage the teams who don't have managers in real life. And of course, you can prevent the use of the in-game editor. I'm going to keep that turned off for now. I usually have it on unless, as people have noticed with the rocks and save, I have it on because people kept complaining I wasn't changing my kits often enough. And I've used it once to change a kit. Anyway, we're going to keep that off because once the editor comes out, I will, I will do an episode of this where I show you how to use that as well. Because I think it's quite important for us to, be, to go through the whole thing. So, without any further ado, we're going to start the game, and I will rejoin you in a second once we've got the game world loaded. So, once the game's loaded, this is where you'll find yourself. It'll give you a chance to re-edit your profile if you want to have an additional profile or anything else for other games. I obviously just have me, because I'm just me. But you can go in here and edit things like your nationalities, your language, your data, but you can edit the whole thing, to be honest. And uh, we'll, we'll use that profile. Right, this is an important screen on the game. Uh, as a beginner, please, please, please tick these boxes. Suggest experience based on your club. The reason I say that is because I play without, I start with start the game with no coaching badges and with Sunday League footballer experience. You can see if I kick, click these boxes, I'll have the Continental Pro license, which is the top license, and I'll have the international footballer on a global level uh, past, past playing experience. Now, the reason that's important is because these badges determine what standard of job you will be able to get while you're unemployed. So if I went as an unemployed manager with a Continental Pro license, I'll get almost any job on the game just by applying for it. And likewise with the C license, I'm not, I am not, wouldn't get the Manchester United job, for example, were it available. And with no badges, you'll get as far down the league as possible. Likewise, the, uh, the playing experience sort of slider, as it were, the drop down. Uh, Sunday League football is absolutely the most no one's ever heard of you. Semi professional footballer, you played a few years maybe in the National League South or whatever. Uh, local professional footballer, so realistically we're talking Conference National or League Two, League One, Championship, decent mid table Premier League player, and then Messi and Ronaldo, essentially. This affects the type, the quality of players who want to play for you. So if you play as an international player, or global level international player, what you'll find is that players who wouldn't ordinarily want to come to your club, I mean, it basically explains it in the, in the drop down there, players who wouldn't ordinarily want to come to your club will come to your club because they want to play for you. On the other end of the scale, we'll find playing as a Sunday League footballer, players who would normally want to play for Manchester United won't want to play for Manchester United. It's, it's how football goes. That's, that's the way, way players' minds work. We're going to go with that for now. It'll give you the option to add extra managers. We we don't need to do that because it's just me and you here, and I'm I'm supposed to be teaching you. So we're gonna let it do its thing. Give it 30 seconds, and uh, it will pop up a brand new screen welcoming you to the club, which should happen any time now. 
it's chosen right now to be slow. There we go. We're in the Manchester United board or the Manchester UFC. It's Manchester United. They can sue me if they want. I've got nothing for them to take. I've replaced Eric Ten Hag, which is good because Eric Ten Hag apparently found nothing wrong with his boss sending pictures of his genitalia to female staff members when he was at IX. If you don't know that story, um, HITC7 has a really good video on it, so go check that out. Anyway, here next, it's going to take you through a, basically an introduction to the entire club, which is quite nice. So you can see Manchester United got a big reputation, predicted to finish fourth. Um, we've got our director of football, our assistant manager, we've found 1878, and our fierce rivals, as everyone in the world knows, is Liverpool. Tells you all about Old Trafford and the Trafford Training Centre, which is nice. We've got a 130 million transfer budget, which is very, very tasty, and a 4.7 million wage budget, which is as good as you'd expect for the Premier League. Uh, last season, it gives you, tells you what happened. We finished third in the league. We reached the third round of it. We're entering the third round of the FA Cup. I can't remember how we did in the FA Cup last year. Uh, we, oh, we won the, the semi-final in the FA Cup. Says so right there. I was paying attention and won the Carabao Cup. And we're entering the Champions League this season at the group stage because we finished third. Already good information. You can go through the whole thing. You can see the entire club history. This, this is for any club, not just Manchester United. Everything that club has ever achieved and what's going on with it. It then tells you the coaching staff's assessment of your current squad. Um, it's telling us to play a 5-3-1. Or sorry, 5-3-3 or five, a 4-5-1 a or a 4-3-3. I will English eventually. And our squad personality ambitious. That's quite important. Tells you about your hot prospect, your top earner, all that good stuff, which we will get into in the very near future, of course. You then get onto the club vision, it tells you what the board wants you to achieve. Now, there can be anything in here, such random things. So, here we've got developed players using the club's youth system, which is, of course, a Manchester United trait for the last 70, 80 years. Uh, sign high reputation players, because, of course, Manchester United and sign youngish players. But you might find it says, for example, we manage Wolves, it says sign Portuguese players. It wants you to sign Portuguese players. Um, there's a club, I think somewhere in Spain, where it tells you they want, want you to sign English players. It's very weird. I, I don't know why I would do that. But you'll get also, it'll essentially tell you what it wants you to do here. And you'll occasionally get objectives such as, uh, we'd like you to play for set pieces, or defend solidly, or be a great attacking team, good passing, possession, football, that kind of stuff. It also tells you your five-year plan. So this year, they want us to qualify for the Champions League, which is preferred. Uh, we, it's preferred we reach the end of the, the later stage of the FA Cup. We're required to be competitive in the Champions League, and we need to be competitive in the League Cup. Weirdly, it doesn't say anything about the Premier League. It usually does. Uh, and then it wants us to work towards developing the best youth system in the country and being having the Premier Division's best youth system, which feels like it would go hand-in-hand. Hand. Of course, it doesn't always. feels like it would, though. Uh, the only league in the world I can think of that doesn't go hand in hand is France, where Claire Fontaine, I believe, have the best youth system, but are not playing in the top flight because they sell the players almost immediately. Anyway, uh, well, they weren't expected to go on and achieve, you know, the Premier League title. It tells you any contract expires, all the stuff you kind of generally expect Manchester United to do. Nice and straightforward. And here we go, the supporter culture as well, which is different to what the board want. So the supporters want entertaining football. They want young players from the youth system, and they want attacking football. That's important, and you have to bear that in mind when you start setting up tactically. It's really important you know that. They also want us to forge a higher reputation in Liverpool, be competitive against City, and beat Leeds if we happen to play against them, which probably won't happen for a while, let's be honest. And then obviously they want us to be the biggest club in the world because they're Manchester United, and that's what they expect. And then I'll ask you if you want to arrange a press conference, an inter squad friendly, or a meeting with the backroom staff. I tend to only have a meeting with the backroom staff every month because I find them really tedious. But you can have whatever you want there. Just go with God, essentially. And then I'll ask you to save the game almost immediately. And that is sort of the beginning of the setup phase, which is fine. I assume you'll figure that out for yourself. But I like to go through things step by step. You never know. A lot of young people picking up FM for the first time, for example, might not be able to figure some of this stuff out for themselves but I want to make it easy on them so just the confirmation we've had we've taken over as manager we have our supporter profile update here uh, so you'll find out that 7% of the support of the hardcore fans uh, these are the most vocal fans you really do want to keep these guys on side same with the core fans families will come and go depending on money fair weather fans will only come if you're winning uh, corporate fans essentially affect your sponsorships and casuals are exactly what it suggests. Uh, having support and influence on the board, 
It being high is bad if you are not meeting supporter objectives like we just saw. Please, please, if you're getting a high supporter on the board, make this stuff absolutely your priority above all else. Um, and then it just, these just kind of give you an idea of what money you can expect to be coming in. Right, it's the same as what we saw before, the expectation revisions, except you can, when you join a new club, negotiate them. So, for example, if I didn't want to sign high reputation players, I could tell them I'm not going to do that. Um, same with under-23 players and 21 players for the future, that kind of stuff. Um, for example, I might say I don't want to do that, and then I can just click suggest, and the board don't want me to do that. So, you know, play with it as you will, essentially. Uh, in terms of this, this essentially actually affects your transfer budget. Put it down the bottom. If I tell them I'm going to reach the final of the FA Cup because it's the only thing I can change, it will give me an extra six million to spend an extra hundred grand a week on the wage budget. Um, me or you know, alternatively, I can say I don't want to be judged on that, and you know, that that takes that pressure off. But then I will have to achieve what I me to achieve in the Premier League, which is qualification for the Champions League and reaching the group stage of the Champions League which is actually quite achievable, but we'll, we'll be judged on that as well. Why not? Let's just see what happens. So, um, next thing you'll see is a an update of who is having contracts expire. This is going to be really important for you to know coming into a club. You'll get information like, has a one-year extension, so if I wanted Anthony Marshall to stay for next year, I could just trigger his extension. Uh, friend Eric Bailly are apparently not good enough to be at Manchester United, so I might want to think about selling those on. This is really good information. Uh, Aaron Wan Basaka helps us fill club squad reg registration rules, uh, rules, so he could be valuable to keep on as backup. Uh, Victor Lindelof, good enough for the squad. Yeah, it tells you all this stuff. We'll go through contracts and transfers and stuff shortly, but you can see it tells you all about all of your players there. Nice and easy stuff to pay attention to. We're not going to create a tactic just yet. We'll go. I'll do a separate tactics episode. We'll talk about tactics. Pre-season prep. This is quite important. I personally like a heavier pre-season schedule. I like my players to come back as fit as humanly possible. I do risk injuries, but I do prefer for them to be as fit as humanly possible. Um, it's you know it's generally generally better to push them early. And then you'll see a list of what friendlies you've got as well. That's always quite useful. Uh, we've got an injury update as well. To any players at the club are injured when you come in. I'll tell you about it. So we've got uh, Terrell Malaysia is injured for four to five months, being treated by a specialist. Anthony Marshall out for 12 days to four weeks with a hamstring strain, being treated by the physio. And I've got to be careful that Eric Bailly has a dodgy hamstring that might recur. And Tom Heaton has a dislocated shoulder that might recur, which is bad. This is the next most important screen you'll see. Please pay attention, whichever league you're in, pay attention to whatever version of this it gives you. It's so important that you know what you're, what's happening with your squad in terms of the rules. So for the Premier League, you can have a maximum of 25 players. Eight of them have to have trained in England for three years before their 21st birthday. So important, you bear in mind, you have to have eight players who have developed through the English league system. If you, if you forget that, you'll be in real trouble because you'll only be able to register a maximum of, say, 17 players. And that, I promise you, will not win you anything. Uh, same with the Champions League, um, but also slightly different. And you have to keep both of these rules in mind because it will help you develop your squad. So it's still a maximum of 25 players. You have to have a minimum of two goalkeepers in the squad. We've got 11 at the club, which is arguably way too many. Um, we've got to have four players trained at Manchester United, not just in England. They have to have come through Manchester United's academy between the ages of 15 and 21. They have to have been here for three years. So if you sign someone who's just turned 18, they will eventually qualify once they get there. Likewise, uh, you have to have eight players, including those four, who trained in England between that period. You also find that various competitions have other quirks. If we look at the Champions League, quirks for example because I know they are often the hardest to make it to manage somehow uh, if you enter the rules for squad registry you'll see you get all the rules for all the competitions you're playing here but you'll find that players under a certain age won't have to be uh, registered I think it is under 20 and having been at the club for two years is the rule off the top of my head uh, I think the Premier League one probably specifies something more along those lines. So I'll probably say something like players under a certain age don't have to be registered. If I can, there you go. 
And the 21 players are automatically eligible to play in all matches. Only players registered as competition are eligible, eligible to play. That's only players over 21 are eligible to play, is what that's trying to tell you. So do check out the rules, especially if you're in a league you're not familiar with. You, know, you can see if you don't know the Premier League and you're having to learn all this, that's going to be complicated. This is why people struggle with the MLS because they don't take the time to read the rules. So if you are one of those people who struggles with the MLS, and I'm not going to name any names, Luke, um, but if you don't do the MLS well, um, yeah, please uh, read the rules. And if you, if all else fails, you can leave me questions in the comments. I'll try and help you out as best we can. If you're new to the channel, the police going past is quite a common occurrence. I live next to a police station. It's very frustrating. So um, please don't be put off by that too badly. Right, next thing is the transfer window of progress. Spurs have spent £117 million. Brentford have brought in six players and Chelsea have got rid of seven and Kai Havertz is the biggest deal in the window. So these are the deals that have been completed up to today, the 3rd of July. Obviously anything in the future won't happen, so Ansu Fati won't join Brighton in the universe we've built here. Next thing you want to look at though, on this first day on the job. The first day on the job always takes a little while, which is why this episode is quite long. The rest of them won't be that long. It wants to set up tactics for the squad plan, which is not going to give me a choice. Right, now... Pay minimal attention to this for Manchester United. If, essentially, the rule with the tactics uh, wizard is if the team have been playing above their expectations over the last couple of years, maybe pay it, maybe take the advice of the assistant manager, the little thumbs ups here. If, like Manchester United, you've been underperforming, for the love of God, try and do something different. If you try and do the same thing that's happened before, you'll get the same results. That's how that goes. So, for example, I would probably naturally play a Gagan press or a Tiki Taka. We'll set up a Gagan press for now, and we'll set it up with a 4-2-3-1 DM wide, because I suspect that's probably what we have the players for in the squad. doesn't matter for now, because we're just trying to use the squad planner. The squad planner, first thing you should always do when you join the club is ask the assistant to suggest for everything. and give you a little pop-up saying if you want it to proceed. Yes, you absolutely do. This will give you an idea of who is at the club, who is available in the first team squad. And it gives you, you'll see a little two and a half star rating. Players are rated out of five stars for ability. This will tell you the ability or the average ability of your players in that position. So you can see at a glance, to make this work, I need at least one new defensive midfielder. I need a goalkeeper. I probably need a right back. I probably need an attacking midfielder. And I definitely need a striker because none of the strikers at Manchester United are any good, which is always good to have. You can see the ability, you can see the depth that will tell you how many players you have in each of those positions, and it will tell you how many, you know, which role they're playing currently in that tactic. And it will tell you this for the next couple of seasons as well, so it's quite helpful. You have an experience matrix that tells you who is developing, who is probably emerging and needs to get more game time. Who is at the peak of their powers that you may want to start thinking about when it's time to move them on? And who's experienced you don't need? We obviously don't need Tom Huddleston. I didn't know Tom Huddleston played for Manchester United. I'm guessing he's got a coaching job, he does. I know Tom Heaton does because I pay attention to ex-Swindon players. And Tom Heaton, honestly, probably could still be playing first-team football for a Premier League team. Not Manchester United, but for a Premier League team. But I believe he does have some role in their youth setup as well. The game's not reflecting. Anyway, that's the squad plan. The squad dynamics is the next thing. This is really important. Keep an eye on the squad dynamics. Um, team cohesion is how well the players are blending together. At the moment, it's in the red. We don't want that in the red. We want that to be in the green as fast as possible. Generally speaking, it's because the players haven't played together very often. They don't know each other well. Maybe things aren't working tactically on the pitch. A couple of players are falling out, that kind of stuff. Um, club atmosphere, again, is based on how happy the players are and how likely they are to yell at you. So we have no unhappy players at the club. There's one player at the club who is very happy and they're all of similar ages. That's quite important. And the manager of support on your first day will depend on your reputation in relation to the players. Because we're set up as a Sunday League experience manager, our reputation is quite low and we're dealing with Premier League players. So they don't see us as being on their level. You just kind of win them around with success on the pitch. Next thing up is the hierarchy. This is really important. So our leaders here, you don't want to make your team leaders unhappy. Please don't do that. The rest of the squad will suddenly hate you. I could make Bishop unhappy and it 
wouldn't matter at all. He's got very few friends. Whereas Marcus Rashford, very well liked within the squad. All these guys, if I upset him, will hate you. So that's important. You can even see who likes you, hates you. They're all opposed to you to, to us right now, which is probably um, a bad sign. But that you can bring them around. It also tells you their personalities, who the captain is, the vice captain, all that stuff you might like to know. I'll talk about the personalities as we go on through the series. Uh, social groups are important as well. This, again, is who likes who. So these guys aren't really liked by anybody. Well, I mean, they are, but they're, they're just each other's friends. For example, I could sell Luke Shaw. I'd only upset Kovar and Bishop, and I'll probably sell Kovar and Bishop, and I don't care about upsetting Luke Shaw. Likewise, um, the, this group, I, I sell these guys. It'll upset these guys and vice versa, and same throughout there. Very simple. Squad happiness, you can see who's happy about what in your squad. And it's set up by the, the hierarchy as well here, which is really nice. So you see the overall morale in this column, how happy they are with training, how happy they are with how they're being treated, how happy they are at the club in general, how happy are they are with management in general, that you manage with the team, and how happy they are with the amount of playing time that they're currently receiving. That's quite important. All players, if, if you see a player is unhappy, you can usually go in here and find out why they don't like it. Code of conduct, we haven't agreed that yet, but it's basically you will be fined if you don't show up for training, that kind of thing. You have a team meeting, which you'd normally do on your first day. It's, it would normally ask you to do this anyway. So um, just go through and say, we, you know, so we'd say here, many of you have heard of me, I want to introduce myself as manager of Manchester United. And they all go, very positive. Uh, I'd like to talk about our Premier Division names and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I think we're good enough to mount a title challenge. They don't like that. You have to be careful what you promise them. You can back down and say, OK, we'll just try and qualify for the Champions League and they'll forgive you a little bit. You don't get many forgivenesses, so do your best um, and just say you're pleased, whatever they say. I'd like to talk about getting to the Champions League proper this season. They all seem happy with that. Good stuff. FA Cup, I would like to win the FA Cup. And they all seem quite happy with that, which is good. And then you can talk about promises. Uh, so, for example, here, I probably want to bring in quality and attack, and they, you'll find that attackers tend not to care when you say that, or they get upset. I uh, want to make sure we improve in goal, people are unhappy. Uh, well, you can basically promise them any of this below. It's all fair, fairly straightforward and self-explanatory. Um, we'll say that's sort of the overall expression we're expecting, and then we'll just say thank you and leave the room. And that may actually have already affected our relationship with the players. We can have a little look back here. Hasn't really done a lot, but it's improved the club atmosphere here, which is really good. People are at least slightly happier. And you can also get feedback on the team talk from your last match in that tab. We'll go into tactics later on. Data Hub is honestly very useful and is a separate video in itself. It's not essential for playing Football Manager, but I will do a video at some stage where I explain how to use the Data Hub because it's very important. It's very useful once you've played a few games to kind of get this analysis on who's doing what, what, where, you know, things are going wrong, how your opponents are doing, all that kind of stuff. One thing I recommend you do do on your first day is take a look at your staff. Now, primarily, for almost any club, you are going to want to focus on your first team coaching staff. It does this occasionally. I don't know why. It will just grey everything out. Focus, for the love of God, on your first team coaching staff. If you're a small club, you obviously will only have one or two coaches. A bigger club, more coaches. Fairly self-explanatory. What you do want to do, though, is have the absolute best coaches you can get. And the way to find out where you are with that is using the team comparisons. This compares you to every other team in the Premier League and where you are. And you can see the average by kind of hovering here. So with the second best in the in goalkeeper Scott shot stopping for example by Liverpool. You want to kind of recruit staff for covering those weaknesses and get rid getting rid of anyone who's causing those weaknesses until you feel like you've got a nice balance where it all works out and you've got all gold like this here. Very straightforward hopefully. Um, you can pick responsibilities in here as well. This is a really useful screen for a new manager because FM is very in depth and I'll go through as much as I can with you during this series. But it's important to know who's doing what. So, for example, for staff, uh, team selections, you might want to let one of your coaches just pick your team. Why not? Um, you're basically not managing the team at that point, but you might want to do that. Likewise, you might want to have someone hire and fire director of football. I can hand that over to the chairman. I can hand that over to any of my directors, as I wish. I mean, I could just say, let Alex Ferguson do it. He knows what he's doing. 
Same with the uh, same with the technical director. Well, Alex Ferguson made those choices. I can do. I, I can hand over almost anything but team selection to Alex Ferguson if I want to. Um, very straightforward, really. You can just kind of pick who does what. Always hit confirm before you move on, and then we'll go through advice and reports. You can pick, for example, uh, who gives you recruitment advice based on what their stats and skills are. So if I want to know who I should be signing right now, he's probably a good choice because he'll tell me he's got pretty high stats in both those things. I might want a director of football who is better at analysing data than that, if I can find one, but otherwise he's pretty solid. Same with scout feedback, you essentially want to leave this up to your chief scout, your director of football, usually at any club. Um, likewise, player development, it's important to have someone who's good at youth development doing that. Nick Cox, very good at that, so we put him in charge. Player reports, uh, I probably want these coming from a director of football or an assistant manager. I'll leave that with Steve McLaren. Youth development information, always from your head of youth development, because if you haven't got a good head of youth development, you shouldn't be doing it. Same with the loan feedback. If you've got a loan manager, use your loan manager for it. You oftentimes won't, and then I would go to your chief scout for that. Uh, if you're a small club, you won't have a loan manager. Use your chief scout for that. Uh, coaching advice, again, probably leave that to your best coach here. And staffing advice, I'm probably going to say I would put John Murto for that because he's probably the best for doing that. Uh, Lowways, you can also pick your when it tells you about targets, uh, staff meetings. You can turn all of these to never if you want, so that's quite helpful. Uh, scouting wise, as well, you can essentially leave your scouting team to handle everything. I often do because it saves me some time. I will go through proper scouting because I can do it, but I won't. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it right now. And then you can pick obviously who. You can have your, if you want to, we call it the director of football challenge. You can say, okay, my director of football is going to choose everyone that signs Manchester United. You can do that. It's up, you can have as much or as little control as you want. You can choose if you want to speak to the media. Um, for example, I really hate broadcasting. It uses only four questions. It's very repetitive. Uh, training wise, you can delegate it. You can do it manually. I'll show you how to do both. I've just shown you how to do delegating it. Man manually we'll go through at some stage same with tactics you can have someone in your squad in your coaching staff provide opposition instructions if you want to and match wise again you can have your touchline instructions your team talk even your friendly matches handed over Petters, i like to have my under 21s playing a friendly every week regardless um and i would also ideally have my under 18s doing it more game time is better for youth development that's why we do that um if you need to hire new staff Go in the staff search. I'll go through this in depth when we do transfers, probably because it's largely the same system on a different size. But you can click on new search, you can tell it what you're looking for. So, if I want a new coach, I can tell it I want a new coach. If I want the difference, this makes is if they're employed by a club when you hire them, you will have to pay compensation. If they're not, like if you're a small club, always pick no, it's going to save you money. Saving money at a small club is always important. And then you can look at whatever's here. I could have Charlie Adam come in as a Manchester United coach if I wanted to. Very simple, you can shortlist coaches there, you'll find a list of them of staff and you shortlist there. If you need a new job, you'll find it in the job centre. Um, you can filter this. I never have understood why it tells you, you know, because if you want to hire someone, you can place an advert. That's the only reason you can see who else is hiring, whatever. If, you, if I were looking for a job right now, I'd untick that box, I would tick that box, and it would tell me those are the jobs that are available. It's very straightforward. Those are the current jobs that are available in this world. Um, and then job security tells you the same thing, but also if someone's on the verge of being sacked, you'll find that it comes up here saying insecure or very insecure or precarious or whatever. Very straightforward. We'll go through training in depth. Very quick overview of training though. You have this is your general overview screen, of course. You can pick literally down to the training session what they're gonna what they're gonna train on you can get so in depth with that if you wish to um schedules wise again you can have different schedules for different phases of the season all set up your training units so for example your goalkeepers will train together your defenders will train together if you do attack versus defense obviously the attack will go versus the defense very straightforward um, match prep we can tell it to prepare a primary tactic for that uh, mentoring Really important, please do mentoring right away. I cannot recommend this enough. The reason I cannot recommend this enough is that this is how you develop young players. So you can do it manually, it's very straightforward. 
I would recommend if you're new, just ask your assistant to assign. And what we'll see here is that Tom Heaton is going to mentor the two young goalkeepers. He's highly influential in our squad, so they'll listen to him. You can see here he's got a significant influence on the group, and hopefully they will learn from him. What they learn from him is not the technical skills or the physical skills. They learn the mental stuff from these guys. It's literally a mentoring thing. So if I've got a player who has really good mental attributes for their position, and I want my young players to adopt some of those traits, then I will put them together in a mentoring group of three or four, and they can learn from those players. So we've got Garnacho and Pelistri learning from Rashford, probably not a great idea. Uh, Bruno Fernandes teaching Anthony and Jaden Sancho might be a slightly better idea. Um, Varane training Malassia and Williams, you know, that. that Essentially, you'll have one senior member of your squad, two young members of the squad, trying to teach them things as they go. Now, individual training. You can do individual training for each player as well. Um, it's very straightforward. You click on the player and you can look at here. First, we have a training rating. So, Brandon Williams has trained very well in the last week. You might want to be a rewarding manager who will look at a player who might be on the fringe of your squad. If you're trying to pick between two players for a team selection, Maybe you reward the one that trains better. In fact, if you reward the one that trains better, this is actually kind of a fun little hack that most people don't know in FM. If, say, just as an example, say I've got a pick between Tom Heaton and Nathan Bishop to play in goal for Manchester United. And God knows, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, I would, in this case, pick Tom Heaton because he's trained better. And then Nathan Bishop might look at that and go, Oh, he got in the squad because he, he got in the team this week because he trained harder and he'll train harder the next week without you saying anything to him. It's really nice. The game does understand that, that dynamic if you want to install that work ethic in your team. Generally, only do that with players who are good enough for your first team. If you have a 15 year old player from your youth team who happens, in fact, we could probably, we've got all of our current players in the squad. If one of your youth team pops up with a 10 training rating, and he's 15, he's got one star ability, don't put him in the team, please. Just don't. He's training well, leave him to it. Likewise, on the other side of that, you can rest your players. So you can have normal intensity, half intensity, you can tell the physio to recommend it. If any of these physio recommendation boxes here say send on holiday, do not press that button. Do it manually. Send them on holiday manually. Otherwise, you will send them on holiday for about six months and you'll forget he's in your squad. It's really, really painful, but it's very good to make sure you get the right training intensity up. This is also very important. Now, if, if a player is fully fit, I will always have them on double intensity because then they get better faster. They train twice as hard. Their stats develop faster. This one, dealer's choice, I would have that on normal because, or certainly during the season, during pre-season, double, during, during the regular season, normal, don't tire them out. And then definitely follow the recommendations for the hearts down there for condition. And then you can literally pick which coach does which job. I can have Darren Fletcher teaching goalkeepers if I want to. I don't know why I'd want to, but I can. Um, you can also just click this button and your assistant manager will go, okay, this is what everyone's best at. Go through them, see who does what jobs best and assign them accordingly. It will tell you down the bottom here with these green highlighted things what stats for a coach are best for that position and you want to have people who are good at all of that ideally for example set pieces i don't currently have a set piece coach i probably don't want to be teaching it myself because my uh, my set piece training is one and i probably don't really want mark dempsey doing it because his set piece training is eight and there's probably someone who's better better at it than either of them i'd like to think you know in a realistic world Darren Fletcher would have quite a good rating for that, but apparently not. Anyway, maybe Tom Huddleston does. He was decent over a dead ball occasionally. Still doesn't. Okay, game's broken. Doesn't matter. Click OK, let it do its thing, but you can go in there and you can tweak that as much as you like. Next thing down is going to be the medical centre. Very straightforward. Um, it tells you who's injured, who's at risk of more injuries, who's at risk of injury. If they haven't played a game in a while, they will be at increased injury risk in pre-season. I recommend as a newbie to play the friendlies and to make sure people only play 45 minutes a game. Rotate your entire squad at half-time just until you get everyone fit. Very straightforward. Um, it tells you who's currently injured, who, who has just come back from injury. 
as well. Um, so Donny van der Beek has just come back from injury. He's at peak physical condition. He's not fully match sharp, but you might want to pay attention. He's got torn knee ligaments. Maybe don't dump him straight back in the first team. He's currently wanted. That's always good. Um, risk assessment as well. I will tell you who is at risk of picking up an injury. It's really important to keep an eye on this. If a player ends up up here at high risk of injury, don't play them for a couple of games. Rest them. They will be injured for a while if you don't. And then likewise, you can see people's injury histories. You can see all sorts of stuff. Even a summary of who's missed what games and what days this season. Beautiful stuff. The schedule's here. It tells you who we're playing. So obviously Brentford on the opening day. It goes through. We'll add in cup games as cup draws happen. The cup draws with the real fixtures are the only things that will change from real life. Um, you can look at your whole calendar to see how many days between games. You can schedule friendlies in here by clicking there and arranging a friendly. If you want to put a friendly in that day, you can do it. Uh, events as well, it will tell you about things like the beginning of pre-season recruitment meetings. You'll see as you go through the season, registration for things and deadline days and draws and all that kind of stuff is in that screen. Any reminders you've set yourself, like your own diary on Outlook or whatever, or on your phone, that you can set a reminder in there and just say, remind me to bid for this player or whatever you want to be reminded for. This is the competition screen. Tells you what competitions you're in this season. Very straightforward. We're in the Premier League. We're in the FA Cup, the Champions League and the Carabao Cup. Expectations are always here. This rating, obviously, red, bad, green, good. Tells you how the board think you're doing in that competition. You can click through in 20 of these to see what's currently going on with them. So I can click through here to the Champions League. I can see the first qualifying round and who's playing who. And there are some incredibly... Nondescript ties there, that's one of the worst draws I've ever seen. Ferris Faros and Dinamo Tbilisi being the most exciting game in that round. And you can also see up here who's holding the trophy and where the final place was at Wembley this year. And you can go through all the things like the stats of each player, the winners, all that kind of stuff. You can see everything on those screens by clicking through. I'll do a scouting and transfers episode, probably next actually, because we need to, in fact, no, we'll talk squad and tactics in the next episode properly. Uh, we'll then go into club info. Very important to have at least an idea of the club info. Little things like the club legends, obviously quite important here. Um, if you find the supporters starting, this is a little bit of an underhand trick. If you find the supporters are starting to hate you a little bit, and you have the gap in your staff, I could say, look at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and go, oh, the fans really like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Let's hire him as a coach, and I'll click there, and I'll click there. And I'll send him a little contract to come and be a coach for us. And I can do that with Roy Keane and probably a bunch of other players. And, you know, I can essentially populate a squad. Uh, I can bring out as many legends back to the club as I want. Likewise, if said club legend is still playing, so let's look at Cristiano Ronaldo. If I want to make the fans really happy, probably not, not at this stage, to be honest. But I could bid for him. I could bring him back to Manchester United. It gets me a little bit more time, a little bit of a reprieve. Makes the fans happy. That kind of stuff. Uh, general info will tell you the most important things about your club, so predictions, the status, your reputation, your squad personality, keep an eye on that, always important. If it gets anything less than sort of balanced, for the love of God, get rid of it, get, get some changes happening. Tells you how your money is doing, how many, uh, how many ESC slots, so players who are not quite good enough for a work permit, but the government essentially will give them a year to prove themselves at the club if you can convince them. Um, news here, facilities here, always quite important to have an eye on your facilities. Obviously, Manchester United, everything, everything's the best you could be. If I go to, let's pick a random National League club, Boreham Wood, it's probably a really bad example for what I'm trying to prove here. Um, Facilities-wise, though, you'll see, like, maybe things aren't quite as good further down the leagues and the grounds are smaller and it's very good when you're sending players on loan send them out to the best youth the best training facilities you can find as rapidly as you can you also see what affiliate clubs you have Manchester United currently have no affiliate clubs you can look for affiliate clubs it could be players in your own country to send team send players on loan to so I could say get an affiliation with Salford City and send my youngsters there I could do as many I've often done in the past send players to Belgium or France or whatever to get work permits or to just get football or whatever it might be. You can also get affiliate clubs in say the US or China or whatever which will boost your revenue. It'll all explain what it does in there and of course we can look at the Manchester United history in more detail than we saw before. You can get the dates and every, every time they've been in won a trophy. That kind of thing. Any landmarks that have happened that will populate with managerial firings or 
captain changes or ownership changes of clubs, that kind of stuff. Very straightforward. You can see all the club records, which obviously a bit of a proud history of Manchester United. That's always good. Um, and then we can also see, for example, the best 11 of all, t- of all time and of various seasons. We can find out individual things about players as well. So, you know, this will tell us who played what games, etc., etc. You can go quite in depth. Club vision is what we saw before, but kind of broken down a bit more, and you can really break this down. So, for example, you can look at how they feel about your uh, performance in general, how they feel about your performance in the most recent match, how they feel about your transfer activity, your tactics, your squad in general. So you can see here, for example, the atmosphere is really good, and what it will do here, the fans satisfy the players are in good form, right? obviously no one's in any form. But you'll get a grade from A, a plus to F, I believe. It doesn't go further down than F. Um, and how they feel about each player in the squad, whether they've been good enough recently. It's, it's good for kind of getting second opinions from supporters on things, which can occasionally be beneficial, especially if you've got a club like this where you are trying to impress people. Right. Um, this next thing is brand new, actually, for FM24, the board screen. You never used to have to do much with the board. They were just kind of there. Uh, but you can see if they've got requests of you. You can see how long they've been at the club, all this kind of stuff. It's actually quite useful having all this kind of stuff here. Because in here you can make board requests. So I could say, give me better youth facilities. Give me more money. Give me an affiliate. Let me run a trial day. Running a trial day is really good if you're at a small club, by the way, for finding new talent. Uh, start a coaching course. You can have some new contracts, a new stadium. All that kind of good stuff in there. Always really good to keep an eye on. And then the supporters overview is there, but you also will get a more of a breakdown about your rivals, about your favourite personnel at the club, about finances and things in general. This is always quite useful information to have. And takes us into the finances screen. You can see our overall balance here, £228 million. We can spend 130 of it. It's already good. The one thing I recommend really keeping an eye on is your projection. Now, in a situation like this, and this shouldn't be the case at Manchester United, but apparently it is. Um, at a lower club, I would sacrifice staff. Get rid of staff, get rid of players, trim everything back. You only need their system manager and 20 players in, say, the conference. That's all you really need. Just do whatever, it, whatever you can to get your finances in the black by the end of the season. To predict. Obviously, that will change with various players coming and going. Uh, prizes, TV money, that kind of stuff. But you can also see how that's being broken down. So we can see what we've got this season in sponsorship, in player sales, in everything really. Um, likewise, you can see what we're spending money on. So this is really good. If, if you find that, say you're losing, say we're losing £200,000 a month rather than making £200,000 a month. If my youth setup was costing me £300,000 a month, I'd probably scale that back a little bit. I'd ask the board to stop spending money on that. That kind of stuff, but it's all in there broken down nicely. You can see a summary of your wage but wages right now and how it's gone over time. What your average wage is for each position, your lowest wage, your highest wage, etc. What it advises you don't spend more than on a player per week. And I think the advised maximum basic is worth paying attention to very closely. You can also see what your wage chart will be if you're relegated because of various clauses. Always quite useful. You can see what your salary commitments are, so you can see whose contracts are expiring this year by essentially clicking there. Any player there, their contract is up at the end of the season. We're not be paying anymore. Likewise, you can see here that we're paying Luke Shaw until at least the end of 2027. We're paying a lot of money. And we can see what he costs to get rid of what we what we get for getting rid of him. Um, again, the code of conduct lives in there. Uh, we've got a summary of FFP. Keep FFP in mind. I know this, I know this is a long video. It's going to be quite important. It's a long video. Trust me, this is the grounding for something very useful for you. Anyway, FFP, different rules for different competitions. It's broken down here. A Premier League club can lose no more than £15 million pound over a three-year period, and we should make a profit of £150 million. I don't know how that works with that projection. Let's go with it. Let's assume that that's what they're saying. Um, please don't let that get to minus £16 million because you'll find you get point deductions. Likewise, continental competitions, you'll have a slightly different set of rules, so we can't lose more than 4.28 million, and over that same three-year period, that's really important. 
and if you if you fail to comply, you will be banned from Europe for a year. Really important to pay attention to that screen. This will tell you what money you owe people because it's Manchester United. They owe four hundred million pounds, mostly to the owners. I think um, this is what sponsorships coming in. This will go up as you go up the leagues and go down as you go down the leagues, and depends on success. And you might find you get other things that pop in there. It's really straightforward. And again, the projection screen is there. And the last thing I'm going to show you is where to find the development centre. This is all your young players in the squad. You can tell it will tell you who is the best by potential. So Daniel Gore is our best prospect in the youth team. And you can see his defensive midfielders. as you can see his coach summary here. I'll go through that in more detail in the next episode when we talk about squad building and tactics, probably in that order, because that's going to be quite important. Uh, under here as well, you can also see what, who's out on loan at various clubs. You can see everything for your under-21 squad by just clicking there. It'll tell you who's in your squad. You can see who they're playing when. You can see what tactics there are. You can, there is an option uh, in... Is it in here? No. Uh, there is an option to tell it not to play your first team tactic. You can just let your under-21 manager just do his own thing. Uh, in Youth Canada, when you get a new youth intake, will give you the list of who is coming in here so you can decide to sign them and likewise you can see your staff here that is pretty much the breakdown of your first day on the job in terms of where everything is i'll be back in the next episode to talk you through uh probably do tactics and squad building together we'll see how that goes we'll see how that goes when i get there anyway guys thank you much for watching um, I have as always been chasing and if you enjoyed this do like and subscribe and leave comments down below share it with your friends it'll help other players to find it as well as boosting the channel you know the more the more likes we get the more people we can help with this kind of stuff I know it's been long I know it's been in depth but as I said I want this to be a complete bit beginner's guide this isn't the football manager it was 20 years ago everything has got more complicated and a lot of people might be returning to the game playing for the first time don't have the benefit of having, you know, been playing. I've been playing football manager since 1994. Um, she's that's nearly 30 years ago. Anyway, uh, I've been playing football manager for a long time. Um, so I've grown up getting used to each new thing as it comes in. I haven't had to learn this game. If I had to learn this game from scratch, I think I would go mental. So I'm trying to help people who are in that position to maybe not suffer quite so much. Anyway, as I said, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Um, please do share with your friends. If you've got any questions, uh, if you're a newbie or if you want to know more about something, please, please put them in the comments below. I will check all the comments. I will respond to the comments. I'll help as best as I can. If something looks like it needs a whole video, I'll make a whole video just to walk you through things. So that will be quite simple. Anyway, guys, in the meantime, I've been Chasing Lamey. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all very soon. Until next time, stay safe. Have a good one.